Hey guys, welcome to my first ever wishlist video. If you do not know what will be going on, we will be going into the Chapter 4 Season 1 next season. The leaks and confirmed information from Epic Games Dev and CS Land Invitational event that we will be having the Chapter 3 finale December 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern. Be there on my Twitch. The link will be in the description and on your screen right now. So feel free to hop on. I will be live with Chapter 4 content right now. With that, let's get into some of my most favorite items that I and you guys probably want back. I think we can all agree. Chapter 3 is a very heavy spray meta, and it saved Fortnite. At the very start of the Chapter 3, which blossomed into a ruining of competitive. Right, competitive got ruined off of the spray meta, but I think the spray meta could save competitive. So if we started off the season, submachine gun and stinger SMG, right? But over time, the gold system gets balanced, and we can side grade these guns into better ones. So your stinger, you can side grade it into a combat, but costs 125 gold. And your SMG can side grade into a rapid fire. For 100 gold, right? So, it rewards those players that have a very strong early game and will get through their POI quickly and loot as fast as possible so they can get the better guns faster. It balances RNG more and makes early game more important and more interesting to watch as a viewer and more interesting to play as a player because it's more fun. When you see a fun fight, like if... Take FNCS Invitationals for... For example, right? Game one, your first action was Looter and Muzz versus Smite and Larson. Looter and Muzz won that fight, and that was fun to watch because you can tell these players are having fun. They're fighting each other, and they enjoy the game, and they love it, right? If it's more fun, it's more entertaining. So it really does prioritize your mid game and early game more and stacks your end games because nobody's worried about W keying the entire lobby because they want to get their guns good fast. And it rewards W keying at the same time because if you W key, you take other people's gold. So it makes your shambles teams be the W keying teams, which turn into the good teams, right? But your looting teams now have an advantage over these W keyers. And if you are losing with that much better loot than somebody, either they are a complete demon, or you need to be in creative, working on your max. Right? That's fair to say. So, that's all for my SMGs. We're going to get into ARs, which I think ARs is going to be a little bit more interesting than some of you might think. So, in my opinion, utilities are one of the most important spots in the game. And they should be fun, but not overpowered. I think the throwable launch pad should and will become the new staple throughout the competitive meta. It will be there every season. But a controversial item that I think some of you might not like is the crash pads. Crash pads are so rewarding in solos and team game modes. If you use it wrong, you're either in storm taking damage, you're either taking damage from being exposed, or you're on backside of zone and you have to fight your way back to front side so you're wasting materials too. But if you use it right, it's a perfect rotates free side to the other side of zone. It makes height a little bit harder to hold. You see, holding high ground has been very easy in the last season. Okay, the only thing you have to worry about is the launch pad. If no offense to Queasy and Vino, but one team should not be holding height every single game they make it to end game. Okay, especially once the top level. There is not that much mechanical skill gap between Queasy and Vino and then other teams that are fairly down on the leaderboard. Like, I could honestly, in a 2v2, I don't know who's going to win between Queasy and Vino and Peter Bot and Jamper. Honestly. So, I feel like height should be harder to hold. I think items like Dynamite should be countered to help height stay on height. I think there should be counters both ways crash pads, launch pads. And bouncers, all of these, these three of these things can be used in height takes. And some of the things to defend height pressuring is shield bubbles. 
Shield bubbles are very good for high ground and getting focused by high ground. So it's usable in both categories. And then we finally have our last thing that can be used only for height, and that is dynamite. Because you can almost set traps for tarpers when they come out of their box to stick a dynamite there. They have to tarp around that. It makes tarping harder, and it could bring back some of our teams that are one IGL, one tarper, one fragger. Right now, a bunch of people are saying one IGL and tarper, and one support fragger and a, and a fragger. So you have two, tra two fraggers resulting in the lobby getting killed much quicker because there's much more fighting, which is good for the game, but it's making end game worse and worse in trios because it's very hard for a team that is one person versus a team that's three up, and there's two people that are just dedicated to push them. I feel like with three people that are more set in their roles, it'll make the game easier, but also so much better. A thing that is very controversial in the community is rocket launchers. I think it's amazing for the meta. With players on high ground with a rocket launcher, launching rockets towards low ground and low ground launching rockets back to high ground, you only have 13 rockets to your team, and that's if you max your rockets, right? High ground's going to use all of them very early, right? So they're not going to be able to have that lock, ro rocket launcher to counter other people's rocket launchers unless they play the rocket launcher, right, which is skillful. And low ground, if you want to fire to high ground, which is more punishing for high ground than it is for low ground to get hit with a rocket launcher because it just breaks your builds and you just rebuild because you're on low ground, right? But high ground, you get chopped out. You lose all of your control up there and you probably will take fall damage if you're a good high ground team you are up enough that you aren't you are will you are going to take fall damage right so i think rocket launchers are good but should not be completely common like the gray green and blue rocket launchers have no place in the game purple and green purple and gold ones should I think the guided missile launcher would be really neat and competitive because in mid game that'd be the best way to get surge like think about that that would be cool if you could actually pull that off you're crazy so i think we should have some more wacky items it, it looks better from a player that's not playing it because i i watched the fncs invitational with my friend who he does he has like 150 arena points like he does not care but he thought it was cool because it looks so fun. So I think fun is good. But you also need to have some counters to fun. Because this is people's living. You can't be messing with that. Understand that. So I think healing. On the other hand though. Much different story. For the assault rifles, I really like the MK7, like, a lot. Uh, it's very rewarding if you manage to track your shots well, which is the hardest part of landing shots on keyboard and mouse and controller. Um, it's in a very good spot balance-wise with controlling recoil. And if it's brought back, you could see some interesting strategies going with it with teams splitting ammo and running different guns because it takes so much ammo. But another one of my favorites... On that meta of splitting ammo is tactical AR, right? At MK7, right? One player runs the MK7, one player runs the TAC AR, and then you have a player running a more balanced rifle, which I think you guys are gonna like for me. But it's like that TAC AR gives the new feel to the game and makes the game a little bit more fresh because I haven't seen it in so long. And I think our last wet rifle might be the most controversial. I think the hammer assault rifle should be in the game, but only f through common through rare, so gray through blue rarities. Our legendary and epic rarities should be the scar. I think the hammer to scar transition is better than the assault rifle to scar transition, because I'll throw a clip up right now of Booga completely tracking a player out of the sky with the normal AR, but the bloom on it is just so bad that he hit like, maybe one or two shots. Where with a hammer, that would have been a completely different story. He would have maybe hit four or five shots, and that player would have been punished for being out in the open like that, right? 
and the scar is not as bloom reliant as the normal ar i know they're technically the same rifle just leveled up but it feels different it has different bloom and much better damage and much more rewarding where the hammer is a better weapon through common through blue and it may be unorthodox but we need to make the game as good as possible and or unorthodox might be the play sometimes first off i think we should look at the shotgun meta we have not had a very strong meta historically in chapter three we had the striker auto and two shot which was our strongest meta we've ever had of chapter three and that compares nothing to the chapter two metas and chapter one metas with either double pump or if it was some of our seasons without the pump with the combat season in season nine charge season in season three and lever season in season five we've had some pretty great combos without a pump i think we should carry it on coming into the next chapter with guns that reward different play styles right a double barrel to reward those risky players that just want to get in your box and get the kill so we can reward them on playing risky or your players that are more passive play defensive and they want to play to range so they use the charge shotgun so they can get a reciprocation but it really does revolve around your play style right but we all know there's always that one shotgun that's a high hip fire whether it's attack auto or the drum shotgun we always have one of those and i think it should be the combat shotgun it's more effective than the attack right it's more utility you can use it like a pump because you can just take your edit shoot and get down or you can shoot pretty fast and at very good range with the combat i feel like it is the perfect fast fire rate gun that we can make more common in our meta and it is very skillful in the sense of if you hit back-to-back -back combat shots you're basically getting the player down almost immediately where with the tack you have to kind of jump in their box fully automatic where it's a combat you maybe take a right hand peek you shoot there and then you put ed window edit in and you shoot through that and they're dead right you have to jump in, you have to fight them through that, that, and you're really playing very risky, and you're not carrying other items because it's just attack. So you just walk in, hold the trigger down, and then they're dead. Right? Which, that should be the SMG, but the SMG has a limit in our clip. Shotgun, that's not going to work. So, it's been two years since we had the combat. Was it like, I'll put some footage on your screen now. It's not very powerful, but I think it's perfect for that fast fire rate. Last time we saw it was Chapter 2 Season 4. And outside of the Chapter 3 guns, I think Chapter 2 stuff, shotguns was their thing. And in Chapter 3, some of our things that were our favorites was ARs and SMGs. That's what I'm going to get to, to now. Healing is the, the strongest point of Fortnite. Best healing system out of any video game. And we don't need to recreate the wheel here. We just need to vault bandages. Keep the big pot, minis, floppers, chug splashes, med kit, med miss combo we got right now. We're fine. I mean, bandages are completely useless. I think if we get rid of bandages, that's the only thing we can get rid of. It's really just a clog and loophole. But I won't be upset if they leave bandages in. Maybe if we went to 100, they'd be better. And they're only used by teams that are dying to surge anyways. And if you're dying to surge, you kind of deserve to be out of that lobby. You kind of deserve to die in that game. Because... It's not that hard to get surge, man. Like, you just need to know where you need to go and know where you need to look. It's just bandages are low skill and they're a med item. I don't think they have a per place in the game, but it's not too bad for somebody to leave bandages in there. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on a notification. It helps a lot, and I appreciate every single one of you watching this right now. I'm going to be streaming Chapter 4 live right now on my Twitch. Feel free to pop in. My link in is in on screen and in description. Thanks for watching, and have a nice rest of your day.